welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie. This is the week 11, March the 8th through the 14th weekly wrap up. Okay, as I said, this is the weekly wrap up. So gonna give you guys a uh, you guys are liking the format that I have now taken on, sort of giving you a little life section and then getting into the book. So let's get to the life section of this video for this week. Um, let's see. Craziness, crazy mass hysteria has broken out with the coronavirus. This is not to say that I am taking this lightly. Um, currently we don't have anyone in our family or in our circle that is um that has is elderly for the most part i mean we have our mothers and our our, our mothers that are of a of older ages and stuff like that uh both myself and my husband but um so you know taking care of them their states away um giving them a call seeing how they're doing things like that uh but you know for our main like circle type thing um we don't have very much going on with that so we are going to be practicing in my family the social uh interaction limitation which you know i can't afford to not go to work so uh, Stephanie's going to be going to work, uh, at least for this first week, um, because, yeah, the company I work for is super small, and, um, they have no clue how they're going to deal with this. Uh, we have quite a few cases here in the state of Virginia. Uh, in Virginia, we are now under a state of emergency, and all the schools have, uh, or at least our county, has decided to participate in the 30-day closure. That's lots of fun. My kid, he's not, he doesn't do very good with, um, with staying home, and he already has cabin fever, because it's like, Mom, can we go to BAM? Ma'am, Mom, can we go to the mall mom can we go here mom can we go there and i'm like no we can't go anywhere because we shouldn't be in large social settings um you know anything more than like five or ten people or if we have to go to the store then we have to go to the store but we're not just gonna voluntarily go out to the store so we are dealing with that that's lots of fun that happened like four hours into him getting off of school on friday because this now uproots his swim practices because his swim practice, even though the aquatic center that he uses is run by the county, the county, that aquatic center is actually in a high school. So we're not exactly sure if they're going to be holding swim practices. Yay. Lots of fun. So there's not going to be a way for him to um, expound his energy that he has building up Whew. wow it's crazy it is crazy luckily he's into books now and his school has a great program where they can uh check out books online and things like that so that's just going to require us to allow him to use our computers uh our laptops however my husband's laptop is like ready to die on him and i'm like ugh. That means he'll have to use my computer, but using my computer while I'm at work is, you know, going to be cool. Love that my husband's freaking boss is absolutely amazing. Love her to death. Um, he's coming back from a trip uh, from Florida, and he actually gets this whole entire week to do telework. Um, it's optional for him, and that really helps out my family because I have to go into work. So he gets to come, he gets to stay at home and telework, which is amazing um and it also gives us a chance to sort of test out the waters of our son being at home sometime by himself scary that is so scary let me just tell you that is like super super scary for me right now um 
letting my kid be a like sort of almost latchkey kid um next year he'll be in middle school and I'm gonna have to be able to do that because there's no way that I'm going to be able to work those hours and still keep up with all of his activities and things like that so yeah craziness it's been a crazy week Oh yeah, forgot to tell you guys, um, this is cut in Stephanie, uh, for the weekly wrap up. But, uh, yeah, a Polycon was canceled due to this virus and social, um, what you call it, limitation thing that's going on right now. Which, okay, I was a little upset about it, but you know what, people's health is way more, uh, important than seeing authors that... I have wanted to see forever. So unicorn author Jody Ellen Malpas is still going to be a unicorn author. Uh, and I don't get to see all my other authors that I was looking forward to. So um, back to the regular schedule. Yeah, forgot to say that earlier. However, I read nine books last week and Ugh, let's just get into them because I've had some hits, I've had some misses, and I'm just really excited to really sort of talk about these books with you guys. So to start off the week, I finished Dirty Billionaire, which is book number one in the Dirty Billionaire series by Megan March. I placed this in Contemporary. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it five Steam fans. I listened to it as an audiobook, and this book follows a musician and a billionaire. Holly is the musician, yeah, is the musical talent. Let me just give there. She won um, a sort of American Idol singing competition show, and she has had to be in a relationship with this douchebag of a guy, and when she decides, she's just like, screw that dude, he's, he's dragging me down more than he's giving me clout, she decides she's gonna branch out and just do the thing she's gonna have a one night stand and just gonna do it um and she ends up meeting Creighton Creighton and they hit it off and he instantly is sort of enamored by her and I was here for this story I really enjoyed it um it turns into a marriage of convenience or one night stand turns to marriage and things like that. And then there is a whole bunch of craziness. And then one of our characters decides to run. And I was like, okay, this does live off on a cliffhanger, but I ended up getting the trilogy bundle on my hoopla. So I was like, okay, I'm getting all the books together and I can just listen, 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 listen. So that brings us to the next book that I finished, which was Dirty Pleasures, which is book number two in the Dirty Billionaire series by Megan March, and it is contemporary. I give this one 3.75 stars. I give it five Steam fans still. Uh, listen to it as an audiobook. This is the second book in the trilogy, as I said, and this continues on with Holly and Creighton's story. There were some moments in here that I was like, okay, I'm here for it, but this section really doesn't move very far. Um, there are some more things that end up happening, and some things are revealed uh, towards the end, and then a character ends up running again. <sighs> really? Really? So that brings us to book number three, which is Dirty Together by Megan March, and I still place it in contemporary. I give this one 3.5 stars. I give it five Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. This is the conclusion of their story and of Holly and Creighton's story, and the reason it seems like this trilogy is just sort of start off really high and started to deteriorate is because the story didn't really move very far for me. It definitely could have been one book, um, and I was just like, ah. And then there were some things that were some twists and turns that were brought in at the end of this book number three that I was like, what? Out of left field, just all of a sudden, these are some things that are going to be thrown in here. And then they weren't further explored. It just kind of, it really kind of left on a cliffhanger, and I was like, I have to read more books to get more answers and then I started reading looking through the catalogs and stuff like that of Megan March and I don't think there is a like spin-off book or anything like that 
um, that goes for Holly and Creighton to further their story. And I'm just like, oh, I just spent three books like enjoying Holly and Creighton's back and forth, their witty banter and their sexiness and things like that. But I don't know what happens with this twist that you just threw at me. So, yeah. Okay. That's where I'm at for that one. Hmm. So then I read P.S. It's Always Been You, part number two by Lauren Blakely. This is a romantic mystery. I started this book, um, whatchamacallit, a couple weeks ago or last week. Last week is when I started it. And I give it 3.75 stars, this section of it, 3.75 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook for Audiobookathon for a full cast narration as well as a celebrity narrator, narrator, narrator. And the narrator is Scott Eastwood, uh, who is Clint Eastwood's son. I love him. He's like one of my husbands. <laughs> love him so much. Anyways, this continues on with Presley and Hunter's story. They are treasure hunting. Um, Presley is a sort of art curator, historian type person. She really wants to make her mark and um, she hadn't been able to do that before. Now she is back with Hunter. Hunter is this huge, big time celebrity uh, treasure hunter and extreme like adventurer thing type thing and they find something very interesting within the story that they are uh exploring uh from book one to now into book two and i was like okay this is getting a little bit more interesting it definitely ranges on that um mystery side of it because they are following clues and really sort of flushing out the story behind the story and i'm like starting to get into it it's like you know national treasure for me at this point so then I end up finishing because I just had to know because this one does end on a cliffhanger as well um because they're short they're short little novellas I think it is one entire book put into three parts or broken into three parts so I went ahead and listened to P.S. It's Always Been You part three by Lauren Blakely and still romantic mystery and this one Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that I didn't DNF the first part because the first part just didn't really jive with me. And then the second part sort of dragged me in a little bit more. And now this part, I give it 4.25 stars. I give it three Steam fans. I listen to it as an auto. Uh, as an audiobook and this is the conclusion of Presley and Hunter's treasure hunt and it was so satisfying so very very satisfying I don't want to talk too much about it because I think it's something that you definitely need to explore and really sort of follow the storyline and it is so enjoyable I really really enjoyed it I felt all of the emotions that went into it and was just so here for it so here for it. The next book that I finished was The Trade by Megan Quinn. I placed this in contemporary. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read this as an arc and this is a sports romance. If you have not been reading Megan Quinn's stories, um, that deals with the baseball players in the city of Chicago, then you probably have not been introduced to Corey Effing Potter. Corey Effing Potter is absolutely fabulous. Um, he is talked about, he was part of the uh, Baltimore uh, baseball team and he ends up getting traded mid-season to the Chicago team and it doesn't happen to be the Chicago team that everyone loves it happens to be the Chicago team that everyone hates and they sort of really get to him they really get to Corey and um he has lots of bad press that go along with his trade when if you know anything about freaking baseball um trades don't happen because the player wants to the trades happen because the owners and the teams do their thing in the background so you know the town and the city and stuff like that of chicago give Corey a really really bad time during the in the press and stuff like that well 
he ends up going to a teammate's um, foundation uh, fundraiser type thing, and he sees this woman, sees Natalie from across the room, and is intrigued by her. They have a conversation, and he's a little bit infatuated by her. Come to find out, Natalie is one of the baseball player's sister, and... <sighs> But there is a thing. She happens to be married when he tries to find out more about her. And their story sort of evolves. They end up having to share a room when they go on pre preseason vacation uh, with the other couples that are part of uh, the series and the story and stuff like that. So they end up having to share a room and come to find out Natalie is going through a divorce and Corey is sort of fighting his feelings and there's some some sexy times that end up happening and it's fabulous. I loved it. Um, just Corey just uh, tore out my little heart. The things that he ends up going through. I love that uh, Megan shows his vulnerability throughout the story. And I was just here for it. Here for it. So the next book that I finished was Lock by Kimberly Knight. This is part of the fairy tale or Sinister Fairy Tales collection in which I am part of the art team for. It is a dark romance. I give this one 3.75 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read it as an arc, as I said. Um, this one was a little hit or miss for me. So the author, Kimberly Knight, specifically says in the beginning of the book that this story is a fairy tale retelling of the Brothers Grimm version of... Uh, Rapunzel. So we have a young girl that uh, is named Zell. She is caught up in this modern day, um, gosh, prostitu prostitution ring, I guess you could say. And the main male character is called Frankie. He is the son of a gangster boss type guy and you get to sort of see them um the reason I have issues with this or wasn't really clicking with it is because I am a very I'm fine with dark romance and everything like that however when dark romances are applied to young adult or borderline adult characters I take a little bit of issue with it um, the reason I didn't have too many issues with this one, except for the fact that our characters are 17 and 18, is because their situations weren't, the, when it included them, there weren't, um, any sort of moral, um, line crossing, I guess you could say. It was the older characters that were definitely had the whole darkness and uh, taboo themes going on with them with prostitution and uh, human trafficking and things like that. Uh, so they saw what was going on, uh, Zell and Frankie, but they didn't necessarily have to uh, deal with that or be involved in it. So um, it was, it didn't fully click with me. It's not something that I'm just like over the moon for, but it wasn't a dumpster fire at the same time, if that makes sense. I then finished Capital South by Raina Miller. I place this in Contemporary Novella. I give it 3.5 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I listen to it on the podcast of Read Me Romance. Read, read me romance. And I also listen to it, uh, but I watched the YouTube version of this. So if you guys don't know, Read Me Romance is now branching out to YouTube and on their channel they are recording um, visually, giving us a recording of them doing the podcast. So excited about that. This sort of enhances their banter because you can actually see their facial expressions when they say different things or when their banter goes back and forth. You can actually see their reaction and it is flipping amazing. Love it oh so much. And uh, so back to this story. It's called Capital South and um, it follows two people. Um, Reese Pink 
is her nickname and Grayson. They are the like lineage or grandkids, something like that of two ex presidents who have gotten together when they were alive, um, to sort of hook up their, like, keep their legacy going and stuff like that. Um, I was okay with, I didn't find the sexiness in it, um, too much, but I love Rain Miller and the story was cute and it was, it was okay. It was just okay for me. Um, it, I didn't really connect with it. But it was interesting because they were childhood sort of crushes and friends and then they have like a one night stand but then they are torn apart and not together and there's another guy that she was supposed to marry and there's a whole bunch of stuff that ends up happening and I'm just like, oh, okay, that, that, that happened. And then the final book that I read last week was Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a straight up mystery. Um, I give it 3.25 stars. I give it zero steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. Um, it was part of Audiobookathon for a full cast and um, reading or listening to another host's favorite. And Kathy is the other co-host in which she said that this was her favorite book. Um, sorry, Kathy, not one of my favorites. I did enjoy or, um, feel okay with the whole full cast and the presentation of it because the full cast version of it is, or the story behind, behind the story is that, um, you have a podcaster who is contacted by a family member and is like, Hey, one of my surrogate granddaughters was murdered and the other one has now gone missing so come to find out um you're following the podcast as they um take the clues that they find and uh, reveal themselves but then at the same time you are finding out from sadie who is the gr surrogate granddaughter uh that's missing what actually is going on or how she's doing throughout this whole thing um it's it's a mystery, so it ends with an open ending, and I hate open ending books. Drives me crazy. Just absolutely drives me crazy. Um, there are content warnings for pedophilia, for sexual abuse, for runaways, and for drug use. So that's all I'm going to say about that one. Yay. What am I currently reading? I am currently reading Consequences by Alethea Romig, and this is for Audiobookathon. Um, I have read this book numerous times, but I had never read it or listened to it as an audiobook, and I am doing that because it is a favorite book of mine for that challenge um, that I'm going to take on, and I'm listening to it. I am enjoying it. I like the fact that... Uh, the narrator is really sort of giving me that sort of astute and overly um, educated sort of feel to Claire, as well as sort of the sinister kind of darkness, dark feeling of uh, Anthony Rawlings. And even though I know the story and I know that there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel, I am still feeling it emotionally. And the one part in this book that is super hard wasn't as hard um, for me this time, but uh, I'm still really enjoying it. This is starts, this is not a romantic series until books that are later on in the series. Um, this first book specifically is definitely a psychological thriller, um, deals heavily with Stockholm Syndrome and things like that. So yeah, really enjoying it. I am also going to be reading We're Going to Need More Wine by Gabrielle Union. This is for the challenge of uh, listen to an audiobook by read by the narrator as well as a nonfiction uh, audiobook. This will probably be the one that I double up on uh, the most. I have like doubled up and tripled up and stuff like that on some other ones, but uh, for the most part I have gotten single books for each one of those. Uh, so really looking forward to reading this one. I am also going to be listening to Blindsided by Amy Dawes. This is the final book in the Harris Brothers series slash spinoff that I need to read, so I'm super excited to get to this one. 
because this is Mac story and I need Mac story. Yes. Yes, please. And I probably will be low key participating in historical romance readathon, which is being held from March the 16th through the 22nd. And the hosts are Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, Lisa from Remarkably Lisa, and Jess from Peace Love Books. They have a bingo board, which is right here. And I don't know which ones I'm going to be doing, but I have some historical romance that I need to read or that I want to read. So why not do that, right? Yeah. So, alrighty. So that is everything that I have been doing for the last week and what I'm currently reading. Have you heard of any of the books that I've read? What are your thoughts on them? If you have read them, let's talk about them down in the comment section. As always, not as always, not yet. So if you guys did not know, my son is a swimmer, like I said in the beginning of the video, but he is holding, or his swim club, his swim team, is holding a raffle and... Um, fundraising sort of event. I will leave the link for that down in the description box, in the description box. So if you want or if you have a couple dollars um, to participate and donate to his keeping in the water, staying swimming and things like that. It's greatly appreciated for the raffle portion of it. They have some really great, amazing uh, prizes. And the best part about it is if you do end up winning if you donate and you buy raffle tickets if you end up winning you input your information into the system when you buy the raffle tickets and if you win they will send you your prize best part about it i won't have to you won't have to like contact me or anything like that you put it into the system your address and everything like that and if you win you may get some awesome awesome things like ear pods or air pods whatever they're called um things like that so yeah definitely if you guys can it's greatly appreciated so that's the end of this video as always if you enjoyed the video please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel also there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel thank you for watching and we will see you guys later